Hello guys, you are welcome to your Computing YouTube channel. My name is Eugene and today I'm going to take you through how you can get the latest Microsoft Windows 11 operating system and then take you through the process on how you can get it installed. Okay. So first of all, Microsoft released the Windows 11 operating system uh, summer this year around June, but they haven't officially released an evaluation copy of Windows 11. So how are people installing this operating system on their machine? How do they get it? I'm going to take you through the process. So first of all, okay, so in order for you to get any evaluation copy or recent version of Microsoft operating system, without going through much hassle, you can just use Google. So I'm going to open my browser here and then just go to google.com. Now, when I get to google.com, I'm going to search for something very simple. Okay, what anybody will do. I'll search for Windows 11 evaluation. Okay. Now, when I go to Windows 11 evaluation, it gives me an option to visit Microsoft's evaluation center, which is the location where normally they place their latest versions of Microsoft Windows product. Okay, so I'm going to go to evaluation center here to see what is there. Now, when you go to the evaluation center, you will see that when you scroll down here, we have an option for Windows, Windows Server, and all those Microsoft products. That you have on the tech market now when you go to the windows option here you see that uh, the evaluation copy for windows 10 enterprises here and windows 10 and office 365 deployment kits so on and so forth is here when you go to windows server here we have windows server even windows server 2022 is available on the evaluation center windows server 2019 is here but mm, windows 11 is missing in action so this means Microsoft hasn't released the evaluation copy of Windows 11 yet. So how do we get it and install it and have a feel of it? Okay, we're going to use a third party means. So we're going to leave the Microsoft website and go to a third party site, right? Now, uh, most people that are installing Microsoft Windows 11 are using the third party site, okay, pirate site. So there is a website that you can visit to download Windows 11. Okay, so let's go there. I'm going to go to Google again and then search for Pirate Bay. Okay, just search for the keyword Pirate Bay. You press enter here. Now, when you press enter, it gives you a whole bunch of Pirate Bay website. Now, I'm going to go for the first one here and it gives me a search engine. Okay, within the search engine, okay. I'm going to search for Windows 11 and then click on the pirate search here. Now, when I click on a pirate search, watch this. It gives me Windows 11 build, whatever, whatever, which was uploaded in the middle of this year, somewhere around June. So it means um, someone has already got his hands on Microsoft Windows 11 and he has pushed it to a torrent site. But before you can get Windows 11 from this website, you need to have a software which is going to connect to this site and pull it. Okay, we normally call it uh, uTorrent. There are other torrent softwares, right? But you need to install at least one torrent software on your system before you can click on this link over here to pull the Windows 11 operating system for you or any other software here that you want for you automatically. Right, so I'm gonna just show you how the software looks like. As you can see, I have a version of the software over here called uTorrent, but how did I get it? I'm gonna take you through the process because you need to get this one installed before you click on this link, else the download is not gonna work. So I'm gonna open a new tab here on my Microsoft Edge web browser and go to Google again, google.com. And then I'm gonna search for this software that I've just installed over here just to show you the process on how I got this software. So I'm gonna search for uTorrent, uTorrent download. So I'm gonna go for this option over here. And then as you can see, it gives me an option to go to uTorrent's official website and download it. So I'm gonna click on this 
takes me to uTorrent's official website, right? Now, there are two versions of the uTorrent application. There is a web version, and then we have a desktop version, right? But I don't really fancy the web version. It runs in a browser, but I don't really like it. I prefer the good old classic desktop version. That is what I'm using right here. So when you get to this site, you just click on free download here. It give you a couple of options to get a paid version, but there's a free version over here that you can get. So you just go for this. When you click on download now, it will take a while, and then a download option will pop up for you. So as you can see, it's telling me uTorrent has been blocked. It has potential, whatever. Okay, okay. Let's try a different browser. Okay, Microsoft Edge has high security. So I'm gonna copy the link over here. Just close this and minimize that. I'm gonna look for Firefox web browser over here, and then I'm gonna paste this link here. Paste and go. Takes me to the same location. Then it pops up, right? So it gives me the option to save it. So I'm gonna go save here, and it's gonna get downloaded real quick. It's done. It's downloaded into my downloads folder. Okay, so once the download is complete, you can just click on it to launch it, right? But I've already installed uTorrent, so I'm not gonna install it again. I'm gonna close this. As you can see, I have uTorrent installed on my system. So that is the process that you can use to get it. This is how it looks like. Okay, so this is how the uTorrent application looks like, right? Now you need to get this one installed and opened before you go back to the torrent site. So if you have uTorrent installed already, when you go to the torrent site and do the search, you click on this magnetic link over here. Are you seeing this? Now this website over here is uh, a little bit uh, malicious. <laughs> so you gotta be careful when you are clicking stuff over here. If you're not careful, you click on something that will take you to the wrong place. So there are a lot of pop-ups on this website. So when you click on a link and you don't get the usual reaction, uh, you close whatever pops up and then you try again, okay? But you don't get so much pop-ups when you are using Microsoft Edge, okay? So when you are searching for the torrents, I recommend you use uh, Microsoft Edge. But when you are downloading the uTorrent application, this one over here, you can use Mozilla Firefox or any other web browser. Okay, so I'm going to go for this one over here, this link. When I click on it, it gives me a pop-up. I'm going to close it. I'm going to give it a try again click and as you can see it tells me okay this site is trying to open uTorrent okay I'm going to click open here and as you can see it loads my uTorrent application and gives me the option to download Windows 11 right but it comes with a whole bunch of junk files okay if you don't want this you can just clear the ones that you don't want Okay, and then maintain maybe the readme file and the activator together with the ISO version of the Windows 11 operating system. So I'm going to go OK here. Once you go OK, you will see that it's going to start downloading. Once the download is complete, you will get a folder in your downloads folder. You just need to make sure this thing progresses up to right up to the end to make sure it's complete before you go for the file. Now. I've already downloaded a Windows 11 operating system. I just wanted to show you the process that I went through to get it, okay? So once it's done downloading, you can go to your downloads folder by just right-clicking on the OS you are downloading over here. Then you go to open containing folder and click continue here. It will take you to your downloads folder and then show you exactly where the OS have been downloaded to, okay? If you don't find this, you can still check your downloads folder on your Windows operating system. Uh, and probably it's going to be there, right, with the name on it. So once you get it, it's in an ISO format. You can burn it to a DVD or you can make a bootable flash drive of it. If you don't know how to make the bootable flash drive, you can give me a comment in the comment section. I'm going to do another version of a video showing you how you can make a bootable flash drive of the Windows 11 operating system. Okay. Now, once you get a Windows 11 operating system downloaded, the rest is installation. So I'm going to take you through the installation process of Windows 11, right? I'm going to do this with 
the help of a virtual machine okay so i'm going to just launch my vmo workstation is one of the most popular virtualization softwares out there it allows you to run a windows operating system or any operating system inside an existing operating system okay so i'm going to take you through how to install windows 11. so i'm going to just power on this machine here by clicking on this okay every system out there has something that we call a boot menu okay if you're using a dell machine when you press f12 it triggers the boot menu if you're using an hp machine some old hp machines use um, escape to trigger the boot menu uh, some use f9 to trigger the boot menu so you have to check your hardware and see if it is a different brand there is always a key on the functional keys either escape f1 f2 f9 if it's a dell machine f12 is the functional key for triggering the boot menu now once you get your boot menu what you need to do is that you just look for if it's a cd that you are using or a dvd that you are using go for the cd or the dvd option if it's a flash drive your flash drive will be detected and then you go for the flash drive right but i'm using uh, more of a cd so i'm going to go for the cd option over here and then it tells me to press any key to boot from CD. I press it. Now, Microsoft has changed um, the Microsoft Windows logo. Now, <laughs> it looks more of like square. So this is the new Windows 11 logo, right? So we're gonna allow the setup to load. Then afterwards, I'll take you through the rest of the steps. Once the setup is done loading, you're gonna get the usual option to select the language for the installation, your time and currency formats your keyboard layout the default is okay so i'm going to click on next here now you see an option to repair or install the new windows this is a new installation so i'm going to go for install and the setup is starting we're going to give it a moment okay now it gives me an option to type in a product key before i proceed but it's not mandatory if you don't have a product key you can just go i don't have a product key and then it will give you an option to skip this part and move on to the next thing as you can see the versions that we have for windows 11 are all here home edition home and home single language education pro pro and and so on and so forth okay there are other versions of windows 11 that was not listed over here windows 11 has a new version called mixed reality okay so it's not listed over here so I'm going to just go for um, a simple one like Windows 11 Pro just for demonstration purposes and I'm going to go for the next button here. But mind you, the minimum hardware requirement for Windows 11 is 4 GB for random access memory. Okay, so uh, if your system doesn't have more than 4 gigs of RAM, uh, the PC is going to drag its feet a little bit if you are doing the installation. So that is what you have to watch out for. You need a minimum four gigs of RAM to install Windows 11, and then you have to have at least a 1.0 GHz CPU clock speed with a dual core CPU like that. Okay, that is not a problem. But if you don't want your system to be slow, the minimum hardware requirement in terms of RAM for Windows 11 is 4 GB RAM. So you need to make sure at least you give the system 4 GB RAM. I'm going to click next here to begin the installation process. I'll accept click next here and then I'm going to use this option over here custom install and then you can decide to create a new partition click apply ok and then format the drive before you begin the installation so I'm going to click next here the installation begins right straightforward just like the usual installation that we've been doing with the Windows 10. So I'm going to allow the installation process on this phase to finish. Then I'm going to resume the video. Now, once the first phase of the installation is complete, it's going to restart. We're going to give it a moment.
Okay, after the first phase of the installation, uh, Windows 11 takes a while to get to this stage, right? So your system is going to boot for the first time after the first phase of the installation, and it's going to restart. So there are going to be two restarts, and then it will take a while. It will take about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the speed of your computer, to get to this particular phase. So when it gets to this phase, it's asking for your country settings. So let me see. I am in Ghana. So let me see. If we have Ghana on the list, just look for a country. Yeah, I think Ghana is on the list. Yes, I select Ghana here and go yes. After a while, it's going to give me the option to specify the keyboard layout. Okay, I'm going to just maintain the US keyboard layout. And then it's giving me an option to specify a second keyboard layout. I'm going to skip this. So at this point, he's checking for update, but I've placed my virtual machine offline. So I don't think we'll get any update. Let's give it a moment. Okay. Now, let's give me the option to specify how I'm going to use this device. Is it for a workplace or is it for personal use? I'll click on personal use and go to next here. And now it's giving me the option to specify my Microsoft account to log in. I'm going to just skip the site by clicking on sign in options. And then I'll specify offline account. But if you have a Microsoft account, and your system is having internet access, you can log in with your Microsoft Outlook mail and proceed. Okay, at this point, it's just giving me information regarding the Microsoft account. I'm gonna just skip this place for now. And then it gives me an option to specify a username for a local account. So I'm gonna just specify my name here, your computing, and then go next here. Next, it will give me an option to enter my password. If you want a password, you can type it there. But I recommend you use a complex password for sake of hackers, okay? But at this point, I'm not going to set any password. I'm just going to click next here. The next thing is that it's going to give me an option to specify my privacy settings for my device. It gives me an option over here if I want to turn on, find my device, location services. I don't want anybody to track me. <laughs> And I don't want to send diagnostic data, so I'm going to turn this off. But if you want to turn them on, it's fine. Okay. Okay. I think I'll leave the rest. Click accept here. It's going to attempt checking for updates one more time, but this very system is offline, so it's not going to get anything. Okay. Now let's see what happens next. Yes. System is getting ready. Just need to be patient here and wait for Windows 11 to put everything together and load. Yeah. Okay, so the installation is complete. Uh, Windows 11 is ready for use, right? So you want to have Windows 11 on your system to just to try it, uh, you can go for this version. But this version is not an official evaluation copy from Microsoft. So I don't recommend you install it on an actual computer. You can put it on a virtual machine or a test PC just to enjoy the view and how Windows 11 uh, looks like, okay? The first thing that I learned in the Windows 11 operating system is to move this start button that has been centered over here or the start menu that has been centered over here to the left side. So let's have a look at how we can do that. When you right click on the taskbar over here, which has changed tremendously. You can click on the settings over here. You just right click on the taskbar here, go to taskbar settings, and then you get an option here. Oh, yeah, I haven't activated my Windows operating system, All right? But as you can see from this side, it gives you taskbar alignment. So if you get to activate it, you can just switch it from this side. Okay, you can change it from here. Just switch it from center to left, and then the start menu will move from the center to the left side if you are used to just using the start menu from the left side. Okay, so I'm gonna end it here. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'll see you in the next tutorial.